This is the third part of the FOA series of videos on instructor training. This video will talk about requirements and responsibilities of the FOA approved schools. FOA schools are expected to be an established organization. That could be a college or university, a professional training organization, or a manufacturer. And by established, we mean having been in business for some period of time. Schools must, must teach an appropriate curriculum, a curriculum that meets the standards of the FOA for certification programs. They must include appropriate hands-on laboratories, which means the school must have a lab and the equipment and know how to use it. The school must use only FOA certified instructors to teach FOA certification classes. We expect our schools to understand those certifications, to understand and follow FOA procedures, and to offer FOA certifications to all students who take those courses. And of course, we expect you to conduct business in an ethical manner. Schools may develop their own curriculum or use the free FOA curriculum as a basis for their programs. The curriculum must cover topics to prepare the students for the certification exams and to develop hands-on skills. And we define what those preparations are in the FOA KSAs, the knowledge, skills, and abilities, which all students must have. The schools may use their own or FOA printed or online references. And a typical class is expected to last about 50% of the time in the classroom and 50% of the time doing hands-on labs. The classes are intended to cover topics relevant to technicians or whomever the course is designed for, as well as the basic material needed for the FOA certification. Thus, a course may include CFOT material, but material appropriate for a given type of application, military, energy, sensors, wireless connections over fiber. That's up to the school to develop the additional materials appropriate for their students. And then the school should provide the students with appropriate notes and references so that they can study for the exam and have it, the reference material after they leave the class for future use. Classroom sessions are expected to give the students the knowledge they need to pass the exam and to work in their given field. But the hands-on labs are to develop the basic skills in using fiber optics. And those skills include cable pulling and preparation, termination, splicing, and testing, as appropriate for the students attending the class. The hands-on labs require the proper equipment and facilities, the proper components, and the knowledge of the instructors who have the skills to teach the hands-on skills to their students. At the end of every class, the instructors must verify that the students achieve acceptable skill levels as defined by the FOA KSAs. The instructors must be sponsored by an FOA approved school to apply for FOA instructor certification. They must pass the instructor exam and they must pass the exams for all certifications that they teach for in their courses, beginning with the CFOT or CPCT. We expect instructors to have the skills and knowledge to teach the classroom sessions and the hands-on labs, and that's what we test in the CFOSI exam. All schools 
applying for FOA approval must read and sign an agreement before becoming approved that indicates they have read and agree to all of the requirements of an FOA approved school. All schools must download and read the FOA procedures from the school download site. The FOA is a virtual organization and we depend on our schools to follow the rules and do a lot of the administrative work so we can keep our certification fees very low. And every year, at the end of the year, all schools must, must renew their approval at the end of the calendar year and must have submitted students during the prior year to gain reapproval. FOA approved schools are required to offer first level certification to all students taking courses that the school has advertised as being an FOA certification course. Schools download all their materials from the FOA school website including whatever curriculum materials they may be using and all the exams. The schools must properly complete all FOA certification applications for every student. The schools must administer the exams properly. All exams are proctored closed book exams. The schools are required to grade the exams. Students may grade their own under the instruction of, the, of their instructor. The schools are required to give the students a CFOT number or a membership number following a numerical order for membership. Four digits is the membership number following the three digit number that is the uh, school's official FOA number. So it's three digit school number, four digit student number. The schools should provide the student with a receipt copy of the application so they know that they have taken the test and what their score was. And the schools are expected to promptly submit all applications to the FOA because if you don't, we know students will be calling soon and that's one of our biggest sources of annoying phone calls. Schools must download the tests and print them themselves. Answer sheets are available for all tests. Multiple tests are available with scrambled answers, so all students don't have to take the same test. Every FOA test is a closed book test, and each student must do their own work. There's no official time limit, but one hour is usual for most first level exams. The instructor should proctor and grade the exams, but the students can do the grading work with the instructor's assistance. The instructor must also verify that every student has demonstrated appropriate skills in the lab sessions. The FOA requirement is that you must have the knowledge, which is proven by passing the exam, and the skills and abilities which are verified by your instructor. Because we often get applications that are unreadable, we prefer that schools use the, uh, the electronic forms for submitting applications. You'll assign a membership number, which is your three-digit code for your school, plus a four-digit student number. Mark the score in the application. For all FOA exams, 70% is considered a passing grade. Return only the student application to the FOA and keep a copy for your records. And shred the test, please, so they don't get passed around. Give your students the receipt form and send one check to cover all students. FOA cannot accept individual checks from each student and most schools include the cost of the certification exam in their tuition. Please do so in a timely fashion. 
we get calls from students within three, four weeks after a class is over looking for their FOA ID card. And if you don't submit the applications quickly, we will end up probably calling you and reminding you that you're late. That completes part three of the FOA instructor training. You're now ready for part four.